Now these two spectacular beasts have been living here for a lot of years and are, it is Edwin and Oswin and they are beautiful, beautiful examples of Dexter cattle and you'll see that they've got their fine winter coats at this time of year to keep them lovely and warm and they are well suited to uh, all sorts of cold environments and quite poor fodder and that's why they were kept as a, as, a, as a breed. Now we don't know what the Saxons would have had exactly, uh, there is some archaeological evidence of bones and, and that kind of thing. Um, but these Dexter cattle are probably quite close to, or as close as we can get to, the sort of traditional um, cattle that would have been around in the days of the monastery. Now the monks wouldn't have been eating these cattle. <laughs> Uh, they were actually weren't allowed to eat um, beasts with four legs so the monks themselves probably would have been more likely to eat um, more of a vegetarian diet and also fish and fowl but cattle like this would have been kept on a farm more because they are beasts of burden so they're very very strong and powerful and could pull ploughs and that sort of thing and they are still are used, cattle are still used as the as beasts of burden in many parts of the world today, uh, just depending what the what the fodder is. But this is Edwin and Oswin, who are Dexter cattle. The breed is known um, from Ireland where the they would survive and, and thrive and do really, really well um, on the poor uh, pasture in that part of the world and so they've been they were bred over the years to be quite small because obviously the smaller you are the less food that you need to consume anyway i'm going to go and visit our other two cattle now and you can see the contrast with them right these are our other two dexter cattle and this is chad and wilf and they are absolutely beautiful i just think that they've got the most beautiful faces Let's have a little bit of a look at you. Good morning, boys. Are you, en are you enjoying your breakfast? <laughs> yeah, that, that looks delicious, I must say. <laughs> now, Chad and Wolf are the same breed as Edwin and Oswin, but they are quite a lot smaller. But if you have a closer look, it's only really their legs that are shorter. And that's because amongst Dexter cattle, um, in breeding over the years to make them nice and small has led to a genetic quirk which is quite common called chondral dysplasia and actually as pedigree cattle it's quite sought after to have the examples with these shorter legs now we keep them in pairs because they would have been kept in pairs uh, yoked together to use as oxen to pull plows and carts and that sort of thing and as well as that, they were also kept for their leather, their hides, their horns, their hair, their bones, everything was used. Um, there was some dairy production, but mainly uh, they would have used milk from um, sheep and goats instead of from cows. Now, one of the other reasons why the monastery would have kept cattle was for their calf skins, for the production of vellum. Now, Monkley Mouth Jarrow was quite famous for producing uh, documents and books, including the Codex Amiatinus. Now, we have a copy of this ancient Bible in our museum here, um, and it's estimated that originally it would have taken approximately 500 calf skins to produce one of these big Bibles, and they made three in the times of Monk Weymouth and Jarrow. One for Monk Weymouth, one for Jarrow, and one that was on its way to the Pope in, in uh, Italy. Now, if you think 1,500 calves were raised to produce these Bibles, it just shows you how well resourced the monasteries were um, back in the day.